Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to build a layered heavy guitar tone. Now, I've been looking on YouTube quite a lot recently for different videos on guitar tones and I was trying to figure out why there are so many and there are so many good guitar sounds people are posting up online but everyone still wants more and I think it's because when they're downloading these guitar tones it, it's not working for them and there's two reasons for this there's the expectations of the people that are downloading these presets and using them for their own projects and there's also the way that the people are providing presets it may not be the most helpful way to people so I don't knock anyone else that's giving away presets obviously it's exactly the same as what I'm doing and they're trying to do people a favor they're trying to help that's great but I was trying to figure out why it's not working for people and I came up with a with a reason for this and as usual with my videos I'm going to be trying to teach some background and some methodology to what I'm going to do here so that you can take this away and make your own guitar tones and not just have a thousand people download mine and everyone sound the same. Now the mistake people make is when they download a preset they think that's going to sound great with their project because it sounds good with the project they've heard online but the problem is that preset hasn't been made with your drums, your bass, your vocals in mind. That's been made by someone else on their system. They may have a Jackson guitar, they may have Waves products that they use to then compress and, and make it sound better. You take that preset, you might have an Ibanez guitar, you might have a different sound card, different different speakers, you might use UAD plugins or you might use stock Cubase ones and you're going to end up with a different end result and that's the problem people have and I think that's why people are still clamoring for new presets all the time because they can't replicate the great ones they're hearing online because there are some brilliant ones online better than what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm okay at doing guitar tones, I'm not the best by any means, there are definitely better ones out there but I don't think when you download their presets they're going to sound as good with your mix as perhaps the way I'm going to teach you here to try and build your own one. And so we'll, we'll see. It's, it's very subjective. This is a difficult subject to cover. That's why there are so many videos on there. Hopefully I'm going to help you. Also note, I am tuning my guitar to C sharp when I play. That has a big effect on how you want to EQ your guitar, how I've EQ'd my cabs and, uh, sorry, my amplifiers for this. So. If you're tuning to B or A or even lower, you're going to definitely have to re-EQ the amplifiers that I give you. Even if, And if you're tuning higher up to E or something, the same, same applies. So really, you have to think about many things before you just take a preset someone else has done and expect it to work well in your own project. One of the most important factors of these two to uh, think about is how your guitars are going to fit in with your bass. If we bring up this quick, simple graph here, you can see the crossover between the great frequencies where the bass works and where you want the low end of your guitar to start working. They cross over somewhere between the 125 to 175 hertz range, depending on how you're tuned and how you're mixing it and how you want the bass to sound. That's really important. You don't want too much low end junk of your guitar to obscure the bass. So something like that is definitely something that someone else's preset will not have taken into consideration. Moving on from, from that to the background and really what you need to know to put together the best guitar tone you can it all comes down nowadays everyone is using impulses and most people have wised up to the fact that there are also some great free vst amplifier simulators on the out, out there available i'm going to be using two different amplifier simulators both by the same guy you would have seen them before you'll, you'll recognize them when they come up he does some of the best that, that are out there and they're free which is great but then when it comes down to the speaker cabinet impulses that really are the deciding factor in how the sound is shaped. What you need to know how I put this together and how you want to go putting this together is what these impulses are telling you how, about how they're going to sound. And this really all comes down to microphone position. Now the type of microphone does have an effect. People have either used a dynamic microphone or a condenser microphone to record. Now a dynamic microphone will sound brighter than a condenser but will also be a bit thinner whereas a condenser will give a nice thick sound but might be a bit middly and a bit a bit too low mid end. So that all has an effect and often when you get an impulse or you download one it will tell you what microphone they've used and that will help you make a decision. You will also see that they've labelled it with other things like edge, centre, fredman or uh, maybe even some numbers by degrees, 20 degrees, 40 degrees. 
This is all describing how the positions of the microphone have been laid out and it will help you decide what ones you want to mix together to get your best tone. So if we bring up uh, some graphics here to show you the common ways people will mic up a cabinet and the ones that you would use if you're replicating this for your impulses, they will choose to either mic near the cone, which is called the center, which is quite a bright sound, or they will move the microphone out nearer the edge of the cone, which gives a bit more of a middly sound. Secondly, they will decide what angle they want to put their microphone at. It will either be straight on or it will be at an angle which is called, straight on will be called on axis and at an angle will be called off axis. These will again have a, uh, an effect on how it sounds but the effect that this has will depend on the microphone used and the room and the speaker make and that type of thing so it's worth experimenting with different types of this. And then also how near or far they've placed the microphone from the speaker cab will also have an effect on the sort of ambience, the roomy sound. So again worth considering you're generally not going to want to have one that's too far away that would end up sounding really really bad but uh, the moving it backwards and forwards does have an effect and, and your impulse will often be labelled near or far. Thirdly, you may come across a lot of impulses with the label Fredman. This is where two microphones have been used at the same time, one usually on axis and one usually off axis, and they've recorded both at the same time, which is basically an automatic type of layering that's already done for you. And it does tend to give a nice thicker sound, which works really well for distorted guitars, but it's not always going to give you what you want. So don't always assume a Fred one is going to be better. That's something that you've got to understand and you need to know how those are put together because you want to really mix the best characteristics of each type of mic setting some although they may be brighter might then have a harsh high end which you need to try and roll off the other ones like with a condenser mic or that are off axis on the edge may sound a lot roomier and a lot more middly which you can't dismiss but you need to give use them to give your guitar a lot of body but then they're lacking the high end which is provided by the the other ones so it's really mixing these together in such a way that you're bringing out the best of everything and trying to minimize the worst of everything so let's see how i applied this to get my guitar tones you're actually going to be getting two guitar tones for one here because what I've done is uh, set something up as if it was a real recording environment. It's got a left guitar and a right guitar and I've used a different amp for each one to give you a bit of variation. So you could end up mixing these together to make one tone or you can separate them out as you wish. I've only done one track each side but the speaker cab emulator I'm using gives me three options per side so it's effectively like tripling up on the guitars which gives a really nice thick sound and good options. Options. So it's almost like I've triple tracked each side, which works really well. And I have put a drum track in just for context here. So let's have a quick listen to uh, the end result. So included a bunch of presets in a zip file. There's a download link at the bottom in the description. It's to a Dropbox file, which is a zip file containing everything that I'm using here in terms of presets. In terms of the VSTs, I will describe them as we go along. They will be available for free, mainly from the people that have created them. I didn't download them and include them myself because uh, I don't really feel that's that's my right to do so. So, but they're easy to find online. So let's get started and see how I've created these left guitar here which is just one one track of guitar we start with one i've covered in the past the tac 808 just a simple boost pedal i've just put the volume up to three quarters the drive on half left the tone as it is in the middle i haven't done a preset for that because that doesn't need one that's very straightforward as you can see that i'm sure you can remember that setting yourself worth downloading if you haven't downloaded this before it's free and it's really good it just has you'd think it's just a boost pedal but for some reason it just has this really nice sound to it so worth trying out if you haven't already so that just boosts the signal and regulates it going into my amp and this is another one i've covered absolute beauty this is another free one this is by a guy called alan lapert and it's called the 
Poulan Lecto. He goes under the name Poulan for his VSTs. A uh, French guy, and I think he everyone loves what he does. It absolutely brilliant sounds, really good quality, and obviously free, which is brilliant. I have saved a preset for this, so this is your left guitar amplifier preset. One thing to point out, if you look here, along here, there's very little going on in the way of tweaking. Nothing goes between more than between about 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock on the dials. If you're whacking things up to 10 or down to 1, I think you're probably going a bit too far. You'll notice there is one here that's really low down, but that's just resonance. You don't want too much cab resonance when you're working with a, with metal. That would just muddy things up in a nasty way. I've added a tiny bit in for realism, but nothing more than that. And another thing to point out is you'll see my drive. The, the drive is only on 11 o'clock. There are three. It's tripling up on the guitars when we get to the cab end of things. And you will find that is easily enough, as you probably heard there in the uh, in the demo, easily enough distortion when it's tripled up to, to layer nicely. If you start going up to sort of the 9 to 12 o'clock positions, you're going to really start adding in some harsh frequencies. And there's no need. The really nice distortion area tends to lie between about 10 and 2 o'clock on most amps. On to the cabs. Now I can actually turn these off because they're not, not being used. This is the Poulain Le Cab 2. This is the speaker impulse uh, loader and it's an absolute beauty. If I give you a quick tour, I've done this in another video so I'll be very quick. You can choose to run things in stereo but I've turned off the right hand side because this is my left guitar and you can see I've panned everything here to left. I've got three options on the left that can be turned on or off and these have each got different impulses in them. I've included in the preset zip file each of these impulses that I've used. Two of them are from a uh, group of impulses called Guitar Hack, which you may have come across. They're, they're really, really good quality, and they're used by lots of people. I've used a center space mic, I've used an edge mic, and then I've also added in one Fredman straight uh, type mic uh, setting which adds in some real body to this and it's an absolutely brilliant sound. Then you'll see this right hand knob for volume. I've blended them as I saw fit, as I saw was the best way to blend them. You may think different. Please do mess around with the way these are set up so that you might come up with a slightly different sound that fits your stuff better. Finally, I used the Cubase stock EQ. I, was, I, I tend to use Waves normally, but uh, I know a lot of people won't have that, so I've used the Cubase stock EQ. I've saved this as a setting as well for left-hand guitar. Not too much drastic stuff going on here, just pulling out some nasty mids, really, that I found were, were creeping through. The problem with when we layer up different cab sounds here is you start off with your amp sound, which you EQ to the best that you can but that's not going to be the best for all three of these you have to find a nice middle ground and then use an eq afterwards to smooth out any rough edges which is what i've done there right guitar similar type of thing it started with the boost pedal same settings so that we're starting off on the same foot i've used another poolan plug-in the legion which is another high gain amp really really good quality worth using as well it's a bit brighter than the lecto and uh, i like mixing them together because you then get some nice differences but because they're both made by the same guy it they tend to blend together really well and worth mixing it up a bit so that you get some interest on both sides of the stereo spectrum and it isn't too similar you'll again notice that there's not a massive amount of knob twiddling going on the more you do this, the more you will notice little tweaks cause more changes than you would otherwise expect, and you will realise that you don't need to be swinging things far left and right to get the differences that you want. And again, the drive is just sitting beyond 12 there, not, not too much higher than that. So uh, again, it's tripled up. We really don't want to be going more than that. On the cab side, and turn off the left-hand side, I've gone for a similar thing. There's uh, guitar hack ones. I've used two Fredman impulses there and then an edge mic, which added a bit more harshness to the sound because the Fredmans were quite thick. The reason I used two Fredmans on this one was because the Legion amp, as I said, was quite bright. It's brighter than the Lecto and the Fredman style of mic giving the really thick sound rolls off the high end nicely. A couple of things we're talking about rolling off that's really useful with this particular plugin 
you'll see there's a high pass and a low pass filter uh, really useful for just taking off those really low ends and taking off the really high end as well and good for you to note where I've done this on each of these because each type of impulse requires different treatment and you can also change the characteristics of an impulse by using these really effectively you might only want the high end of this Fredman straight coming through so you can whack that high pass right up if you wanted just to get the high end coming through again I've saved a preset for this as the right hand side and again some EQ slightly more intense with the Legion reason is as I say the Legion being up brighter it does have some harsher frequencies and I, I, I did notice some around this thousand came up thousand Hertz sorry so I've had to pull that down but because of that it thinned out the sound a bit so I had to boost it a bit above where the bass would would sort of finish its main characteristic sound so that it fills out the guitar sound again and helps it match the lecto a bit better for power one final thing to point out if I bring over my my mixer I've routed both of these to a group, a guitar group. I have put on here a C4 by Waves. If you've got it, then great. If you haven't, you can download a demo from their website. The C4 is renowned for being great for guitars. It's a multiband compressor. And all I've really done, you see there's a very slight 1 dB boost to the 500 to 8K marks. That's most of the guitar sound I've given a slight boost to. The important thing is I've actually just pulled down the 250 mark by 2 dB. The Doing that with a multiband compressor takes away the sort of thumpy, low mid, woofy noise that you don't want and that when you're building up a sound, especially with say something like six guitars, which is effectively what I've got, that builds up on itself and it can be a nasty result so you need something like a multiband pulling that down to uh, get rid of that bit and then just a very simple compressor you can use i've used either the the waves renaissance axe which is just a, a smooth knee compressor which works in this very similar way to just the normal cubist one it just sounds slightly better because it's commercial you can use either of those and that's that's all i've put on these guitars to give that sound that you heard and that is it. The presets are there for you in the bottom. Any links to any VSTs that I've used where I found them for free are available for you. I encourage you to mess around with what I've given you there. Don't just use them. Please try and see how they fit in with your bass, your drums, your vocals, and manipulate them. You don't want everyone sounding the same. You know, metal, one of the best things about metal bands is you put a CD in, you can hear virtually straight away if it's Machine Head, Pantera, Sepultura, Fear Factory, Slipknot, whatever it may be. They all sound distinctive, and a lot of that is down to the guitar sound. So find your own sound. Use this tutorial and others to help you understand how to put it together and come up with something really good. So good luck. I hope you uh, maybe come up with one you enjoy. Cheers.